breaking it. Nods, woman, where am I not? You don't have nods. Can't get dual tubes. Can't even get PVS 14's bridge. Not even PVS 14's, period. What is going on, my friends? Welcome back to the channel. Before we begin, I wanna give a quick shout out to our channel sponsor, which is HRT Tactical. If you've been watching our channel for a while, you've seen that I wear a lot of plate carriers for different situations, but the one I wear for my fully built out kit is gonna be the HRT Rack, which I actually made a video review about maybe like six months ago, and I'm still wearing it to this day because I like it so much. HRT, their motto is mission adaptive gear. They make plate carriers for civilian use as well as specifically for law enforcement and what they mean by mission adaptive is they make a laundry list of placards that you can use and attach quickly or detach quickly from your play carrier just by quick clips for me i use the maximus placard which has two general purpose pouches two pistol mag pouches three ar inserts and it's good to go for me so if you're looking for a good play carrier head over to hrt tactical and check them out now you have heard me say that play carriers and body armor in general can be used for day-to-day -day life, specifically for home invasions. And I think for the most part, people tend to agree. However, there are some that say that you shouldn't use plate carriers, or at least the civilian population, that there's no context in which they could be used. Uh, but I tend to think that those people are very narrow-minded and they don't see things, you know, they see things in black and white when we all know that most of life typically lands somewhere in the gray. And every living situation is different. Every home invasion is different. So there's no one size fits all answer. So nobody should tell you what you should or you shouldn't do. That includes me uh, or anybody else. Now, one thing I did for our department was conduct site surveys. What site surveys are is essentially I would go to areas that were at an increased risk of being the victim of some type of large scale attack, places like churches, water district, hospitals, things like that. And I would meet with representatives and basically just walk their facility and advise them on how to essentially harden their location and decrease that risk. They're gonna be a victim of a large scale attack. And I also worked several years as a beat officer and responded to my fair share of home invasions. So why do I tell you that? Well, I tell you that to help you understand the experience that I'm drawing from when I'm giving you this information, but always question everything that you hear people say online. And that includes myself. And I just understand that these are my opinions that I've formulated through my experiences. Now, in my eyes, there are two major components when preparing for that type of situation. The first one is going to be deterrence, making your house unappealing altogether, which is not going to be the focus of this video, maybe a video for another day. And then the second is going to be time that has a direct impact on whether it is even realistic to try and equip yourself with body armor or gear in general during a home invasion. And if you misjudge a situation, would it be a benefit or could it end up being a detriment to you and your safety? So I want to give you a couple things to consider when you're making that judgment. First, how long would it take the police to respond to your home from the moment that they are notified? The next would be how long would it take an intruder to reach you and your family members? And then lastly, how long would it take you to accomplish the task that you want to accomplish? By that, I mean reaching your family, taking them to a safe room, and then potentially gearing up. These are all things you can, should consider when de determining whether or not it's even realistic to utilize gear or body armor in those type of situation. It's increased protection, but at the cost of that word time. Now, starting macro here. How long would it take the police to respond to your home? That is largely dependent on the city in which you live, and I think it's something that a lot of people who aren't cops may not fully understand. If you live in a densely populated city, it could be within three minutes, you could have 10 police officers outside your house, dispatch on the phone with you, instructing exactly what they want you to do, which is typically going to be shelter in place. Now contrast that to a very rural area. It could take up to 30 minutes for a single deputy to arrive at your front door. And the tactics that he's going to employ may look a whole lot different than the previous scenario that I just mentioned. And I'll give you kind of a breakdown of how it would look when I was working patrol. I worked in a mid-sized city. We would respond immediately and establish what's called a front five, back five perimeter. What that is, is an officer at the two, three corner of the house and an officer at the one, four corner of the house. That's opposing corners of the house, two total officers establishing clear, clear lines of sight down all four sides of the home. And as more officers responded in, those gaps would then get filled in. A hasty entry team would be made. And then from there, it would really, depending on the situation, largely slow down, depending on what information the victim is providing to, to dispatch and what exigency there is there. And how that would look for a single deputy or two deputies rolling up to your house 30 minutes later in the middle of the night, 
those tactics would probably look a whole lot different. I don't really know how they look. They'd probably make entry and try and clear, clear directly to the victim as best that they could. Now, right now you should be asking yourself this question. How long would it take the police to respond to my home? The difference between three minute response versus a 30 minute response is a huge deal. That's the difference between you needing to buy just a few minutes until the cavalry arrives versus you having to be entirely self-sufficient. It is a big deal. In fact, I could probably make a video in, of, on that in and of itself. And then the next would be, how long would it take an intruder to reach you from the moment you, you are alerted of their presence? That is largely dependent on the size of your house. If you live in a 5,000 square foot home, two stories, from the point of entry to the point in which they would reach you is gonna be much different than if you live in a single bedroom apartment. One thing to understand is criminals are lazy and that is why they're breaking your home to begin with. And they typically like to take the path of least resistance. First would be an unlocked front door, then first floor windows, back door, garage, and then finally second story windows. Now, I realize I just gave you guys a crash course on things to consider when building out a home defense plan, but I'm really, honestly, I'm just scratching the surface here. There's so many other things that we didn't even touch on, but a video like that would take all day. You guys don't have all day. I don't have all day, so we're gonna move on. But if there's two things I want you to consider when building out your home defense plan, and two things that you should remember for this video, it is this. The first being, you want to prolong the amount of time it takes an intruder to reach you from the point that you are notified to the point that they are booting in the door to your safe room. And there's a couple ways to do this. And the first one being advanced notification. If the first time you know an intruder is in your home is when they're actually in your home, that doesn't really make sense. But the first time that you realize of their presence is when they're in your home, then you have failed. An intruder doesn't just walk up to your front door for the most part and boot it in. What they're gonna do is they're gonna walk up, try the door, see if it's unlocked. If it's not, then they're probably gonna slow things down, start casing around your house and really looking for their point of entry. And it goes without saying, you should be locking your windows, your doors, and your gates. Do you remember to lock the gate? Uh, yes, this is what I teach on YouTube. Teaches this on YouTube? One thing you can do is buy motion cameras and then position them on the outside of your house. And if you do so in a strategic way and you give yourself phone notifications, that can buy you all the time in the world. Just make sure the phone notifications are dialed in, the sensitivity is dialed in, so it's not buzzing your phone every five minutes because it could turn into a boy who cried wolf situation. Ask me how I know that. And that one thing right there can buy you up to maybe five minutes. And if you can't put gear on in five minutes, then you got bigger problems than an intruder coming into your home. And the next thing I want you to remember is reduce the amount of time it takes to you to accomplish the task that you want to accomplish. By that, I mean gathering your family, taking them to a secure room, calling the police, putting on your gear if you want to, pos positioning yourself in a position of advantage so that you have a drop on intruder should he come through that threshold and also making sure that your family is not in the line of fire if should it go that direction. And ideally, you never want to cross common areas when you're trying to gather your family. By common areas, I mean living rooms, family rooms, dining rooms, kitchens. Those are just red flags, dead zones in my eyes because they have too many angles and it's too unsafe to try and cover all those angles by yourself when you're trying to retrieve your family. Not that there's really ever a safe way to clear a home by yourself, but you get what I'm trying to say. I want all of my family on the same side of the house with no common areas that I actually have to cross to get to them. And if it's a two-story home, I want them all on the same floor. And with gear, it's easy. What I like to do is just position it in the room that I plan to fortify until police get there. Leave it there. You don't have to worry about kids taking it and harming themselves. It's there if you need it. This is how I break it down. Firearms so I can actually defend my family. Then family, retrieving them. Fortify in the safe room. And finally, I'll throw on some gear. I am really just scratching the surface here. There are so many things that we didn't cover that I could cover because this is right up my alley. So let me know in the comments below if you wanna see more content like this. Things like pre-planning, which includes your family, how to harden your home, how to effectively communicate with dispatch, how police respond, and the list just goes on and on and on. So let me know if you like that type of content. But really the goal of this video is to kind of give you some insight on what to think about when you are building out your home defense plan. But more importantly, don't let anyone, myself included, tell you what you should or should not do when we have no idea what your specific situation is. Your situation may very well dictate that gear and plate carriers, body armors, thing like that is realistic. So don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. And I am but one man with one man's opinions, nothing less, nothing more. So seek out other people's opinions online when you're really trying to get a more well-rounded perspective. Guys, thank you for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. As always, don't forget to hit the like, comment, subscribe button, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one.